America is a maritime nation, and we are returning to our maritime roots. One of the key projects that your generation will have to face is sustaining and enhancing American strength across the great maritime region of the Pacific. America's future prosperity and security are tied to our ability to advance peace and security along the arc extending from the Western Pacific and East Asia into the Indian Ocean and South Asia. That reality is inescapable for our country and for our military, which has already begun broadening and deepening our engagement throughout the Asia Pacific. One of your great challenges as an officer in the Navy, as an officer in the Navy, will be to ensure the peace and prosperity of the Asia Pacific region for the 21st century. We need you to project America's power and to reflect America's character, to serve on ships and submarines, to fly planes, and to train and operate throughout that region. We need you to do the important work of strengthening and modernizing our historic alliances with Japan, with Korea, with Australia, with the Philippines, with Thailand. On Sunday, two men became the first Tibetans to self-immolate in Lhasa, the capital of the Tibetan Autonomous Region. The two were taken away by authorities within just a few minutes of setting themselves on fire. The self-immolation occurred just outside the popular tourist spot Zhaokong Temple in Lhasa. According to Chinese state-run media, one of the men, identified as Tobje Zetin, died. The other, a man identified as Darje, was hospitalized. According to Radio Free Asia, a source has said that the two were monks at the temple. The identity of the two men cannot be confirmed. The temple has been under heavy security since. Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. My website is ggnonline.com and on YouTube is ddarko2012 and my backup channel is ddarko2013. So I have a follow-up story that I found after um, I saw this new story, which is the two Tibetan monks self-immolate and Lhasa, which was Tibetan mother of three uh, self-immolates in China's Sichuan province, said on Wednesday afternoon, this is from 5.30, so on Wednesday afternoon, 33-year-old mother of three self-immolated near uh, the monastery. It says here that um, the head of the Buddhist Association in India told Radio Free Asia that the woman's name was Rikyo. He said her body is being held at the monastery despite Chinese police demanding to take it away. So maybe they're going to put it behind bars and torture the dead body. So, um, And it says here, earlier this week, two men in Lhasa became the first report of self-immolated protesters in the Tibetan Autonomous Region. So that's kind of a follow-up. So, And the death of this woman makes it the 38th Tibetan to self-immolate since February of 2009. All the headlines and links will be posted in YouTube's video description. Uh, the first video, if you haven't seen it yet, check it out. It's the economy, and then I uh, kind of move into some surveillance news. And in this one, we'll cover, um, obviously, Asia and kind of basically world uh, political war type stuff. Okay, um, we have this, 45 signs that China is colonizing America. And um, I've been covering this, but I like how this article kind of wrapped it all together because when you saw that video of Panetta saying, you know, uh, we're a we're a maritime nation. Well, we're right. He's right. You know, we go by what maritime law, law of the water, and all that stuff. And um, you know, we need to project our power in Asia now. So that's what the he's talking to the to the future generations of uh, military members that that's their new theater is the Pacific, not the Middle East. So likewise, you have the Chinese also colonizing America slowly. So in case you haven't noticed, many of our formerly great manufacturing cities, such as Detroit, are rotting away while shining new factories and skyscrapers are going up all around China. So and you go down and it says that uh, it was recently announced that China's uh, Wanda Group has bought a U.S. movie theater. Remember I covered that. Uh, also, the Federal Reserve announced that it has given uh, approval for banks owned by the Chinese government to buy stakes in U.S. owned banks. That's right. So it also said here a few days ago that Reuters reported 
that China is now able to completely bypass Wall Street and purchase U.S. debt directly from the U.S. Treasury Department. And after a bunch of money went uh, from U.S. taxpayers to General Motors for being inefficient, that it said they are currently involved in 11 joint ventures with companies owned by the Chinese government. The price for entering into many of these great, uh, joint ventures was a transfer of state-of-the-art technology from GM to the Communist Chinese. And remember, just recently we covered what um, was that uh, the armed services found counterfeit Chinese parts in the Department of Defense supply chain. And remember on the computer chips that I was talking about that have a back door built in them. So, and that's talking about military uh, weapons and stuff like that. So, and uh, yeah, actually there was a in Michigan, a Sino Michigan Properties Chinese company purchased 200 acres there near the, uh, the town of Milan, Michigan. The goal is to build a China city with artificial lakes, Chinese culture center, and hundreds of housing units for Chinese citizens. And lastly, uh, besides stamping up luxury apartments, they're also buying up restaurants in Ohio, but also in Ohio, the Toledo Edison Power Plant as well. Uh, and lastly, I'll finish up with this. You can go there and check out uh, basically the rest of the evidence <laughs> that the United States is being uh, infiltrated and taken over, basically. I mean, it, it's already been taken over, and I'm not going to go through it all right now, but just on the surface, that's, you know, that's what we are... Uh, that's what we're experiencing right now. So, and, you know, for those people that didn't get the memo, there you go. Uh, also, lastly, we have this major road and bridge projects all over the United States are being built by Chinese companies. Meanwhile, there are millions upon millions of blue-collar American workers that cannot find jobs. So, and uh, moving on to this, we have China condemns U.S. gun ownership as human rights violation. It says here a report issued by the State Council. People's Republic of China included U.S. gun ownership among the list of human rights violations as the United States taxpayers also fund abortions in that country, forced abortions, mind you. They drag women out of their homes and abort them and sterilize them in that. It says here, law enforcement examiner reported yesterday the human rights record in the United States in 2011 was published last Friday. Yeah, so, you know... And talk about human rights and stuff. Let's not forget what we were just talking about, which is the brutal occupation and suppression of Tibetan sovereignty. So I'm not even going to go through that and waste our time. It says here, U.S. It, you know, it's kind of like uh, in Mexico where they're saying, oh, all the guns are coming in from uh, the United States, and you guys have too many guns in their countries with citizens. You need to ban guns to end the war on drugs. But we know that if they ended the war on drugs, there wouldn't be... Um, drug cartels and stuff like that that are taking over the uh, the government of Mexico and that you wouldn't have all the violence along the border you know uh, basically uh, bodies that have been beheaded thrown out on the highways on a normal on a normal basis but what you will have is um, you know uh, sting operations like Fast and Furious where the U.S. government was putting and arming the drug cartels so and also shipping in drugs and getting caught so U.S. completes massive military exercise in Jordan. Uh, remember, we covered this before, Operation Eager Lion. So it's an eager lion. Uh, it was meant to reassure puppet dictators of U.S. support and to threaten Iran. It completed the massive military exercise, it included 18 other nations, and served as a provocative show of force in a very unstable region, which is what they're doing uh, with Penang and the Navy and all that, and China and Taiwan right now, and then in South Asia and Australia. And God, I even remember, uh, how could I forget, you know, uh, paratroopers, special forces in, in Korea, so I mean, they're all over the place, right? So Michael Rubin, advisor to former Secretary uh, Rumsfeld from 2002 to 04, is now an analyst at the American Enterprise Institute, told the uh, Christian Science Monitor that the exercise was meant to reassure America's puppet dictators that they have their back, quote, in Washington we convince ourselves we withdrew from Iraq per political agreements, but a lot of propaganda in the region, especially the Iranian-backed propaganda, suggests that we fled in defeat. One of the perceptions uh, we're trying to reverse is the perception among many Gulf monarchs and the King of Jordan that we dumped Hazmi Mubarak in Egypt way too quickly. And he said that it's been a goal since the 1980s uh, to build a kind of military, a military relationship with uh, allied Middle Eastern dictatorships uh, to check against Iran's military ambitions. And this is what I thought it was for a uh, training operation for a future uh, intervention occupation of Syria. But uh, this individual from the Washington Institute for Near East Studies calls the timing of exercise a happy coincidence. So I'm going to keep moving here. We have military intervention in Syria cannot be ruled out, says Francis Holland. 
So um, just, you know, he just likes Sarkozy, you know, it's just one in, uh, one goes out the door, the other comes in, and uh, it's just business as usual, right? Nothing really changes. French unemployment rate hits 12-year high ahead of presidential runoff. So French unemployment rate, hit, uh, rate hits 12-year high. So, you know, this is pretty crazy. There's, what, uh, 2.8 million people that are unemployed in France, and he's calling for, you know, let's, you know, let's go ahead and let's start bombing fucking uh, Syria, right? That's his priority. It says Lebanese joined the Free Syrian Army struggle. So, and remember all the propaganda that we heard, uh, you know, during Rumsfeld and uh, uh, Rumsfeld and uh, Bush and, you know, Paul Wolfowitz, Wolfowitz and all them about jihad, you know, Osama bin Laden, Afghanistan, jihad. Well, today, today there is a need for jihad in Syria, a jihad for righteousness. So that's why it must be that uh, the West is actually putting in puppet governments like in Egypt, like the Muslim Brotherhood and uh, Al-Qaeda run uh, uh, groups in Libya that they took over. And then, of course, in Syria, they're going to try to get the same thing as well. But some, for some reason, we're supposed to be fighting against radical extremists, Al-Qaeda, and Jihad. So we're funding the same enemy that we're supposed to be fighting. And I just wonder how the people over in Afghanistan that, you know, every couple of days you'll hear about a U.S. soldier, a U.S. NATO soldier getting killed. But what the hell are they dying for if it's, <laughs> if they're, if they're, if we're supplying funding and fighting with our enemy, or uh, fighting with her, along with our enemy to uh, fight the enemy, which is supposedly them. But don't worry, you know, people don't want to hear that, you know. There's Vietnam veterans that still, you know, hey, I'm proud of my Vietnam service, damn proud, right? It's like, well, I'd be, I'd be pissed off if I was a Vietnam vet, you know. If I was a Middle Eastern vet, like, um, was it Adam uh, Kokesh River? I'd, you know, I'd be pretty damn pissed off, dude, to realize that it was really for nothing. I mean, it, just, just say it. It was for nothing, dude. You worked for the military-industrial complex. You were, you know, you were tricked. You were fooled. You were brainwashed. You know, like myself, you got to get over that. You know, quit supporting that crap. Once you do that, you'll feel better. The weight will be off your shoulders, and then you can start speaking your mind. When you do, you're going to find out a lot of people are going to respect you for that. NATO behind Hula Massacre, the office of United Nations High Commissioner, uh, says that most of the civilian victims of last week's massacre in a Syrian town were executed. He goes on to be quoted as saying, actually, this was a premeditated, pre-orchestrated component of the NATO foreign policy. Actually, or what you can call it, is an alliance of the U.S.-Israeli, ooh, Saudi Arabia. Remember, I covered that before. Uh, Sunni-backed uh, with regard to this premeditated action and this murder killing hundreds of people there. All right, so I'm going to speed it up here, guys. Western nations expel Syrian envoys, U.S. and ally response. Uh, new details emerge that civilians were massacred uh, by the United Nations and that, uh, and NATO, and United Nations new press for sanctions expected. So remember, al-Qaeda was pictured alongside United Nations. So as long as the U.N. is there, uh, the violence will continue and escalate. But the UN is going to be calling for the end of violence. You see that? You see this? This is the mind games that they play on us, guys. They think that we're that we're flipping stupid that we don't see it. But unfortunately, the majority of people, like I'm saying, like I was saying about the vets, they do. They're zombies. You know, talk about zombies eating people's faces. There's zombies all around you. West Hula Syrian narrative crumbles, expels Syrian diplomats. Anyway, so the UN admits almost all of the people killed were killed at close range by militants, not Syrian soldiers firing uh, artillery. So think of that. Remember that word militants. Syria gives Dutch charge to fair 72 hours to leave. They expelled a uh, Dutch uh, fairs diplomat war between Damascus and the other country. Armed groups attack oil pipeline in Syrian cities. So that's the jihadists attacking the pipelines in Syria. Militants, media propaganda to avoid... Uh, counting civilian deaths, Obama redefined militants to mean all military age uh, people in airstrike bails. So the revelations come uh, from three dozen of Obama's current and former advisors that was published in the New York Times. Go check that out. NATO's senior al-Qaeda leader killed in Afghanistan. It's the only ones you ever hear about, right? The leaders, right? So it justifies what? Afghan family getting killed by an airstrike. Where's their names? So it's, instead of trying to fix a problem of soldiers posing with dead Taliban fighters and burning the Quran, uh, they're just going to go ahead and restrict war zone photography. Also, they're going to bug uh, the place, a whole Afghanistan, with these little stones, spy stones, after they, quote, pull out. U.S. terror drone strikes breed sympathy for militants in Yemen, says a report. 
And as more militants in Yemen were uh, killed recently, UN says after a single candidate vote, Yemen's democracy is largely on track. Don't forget the executive order by Obama blocking property of people that threaten the peace, security, and stability of Yemen.